Hey gang, Rick with Let's Level Up, and I'm here today to tell you about Swords and Bagpipes by Jan Egeroth, published by Wright Games LLC. They're actually going to be doing an international release for this game on Kickstarter, and you should be seeing it very soon if you haven't already. Swords and Bagpipes is a very neat social deduction game that I actually really like. Um, there's a lot of really cool things going on in this game, and it, there's an element of backstabbiness that um, that isn't in a lot of the other social deduction games. Um, there's no player elimination, so we can get that right out of the way. This game is going to play three to five players in probably 45 minutes to an hour and 15 minutes, depending on how many players you've got. Um, in this game, we're going to be different clans and different uh, houses of Scottish fame. Uh, and I have the blue clan here uh, of Clan Thompson. We have Clan McLeod here in the yellow, and in the red we have Clan Coleman. This is kind of a setup for three players. But again, it plays up to five, and I think plays best with four to five, uh, really. Um, there's going to be a lot of uh, different things going on in this game at one time. Uh, for instance, every single turn, the English armies are going to be advancing. And we're going to have to make decisions on whether or not we want to support and fight for Scotland, or maybe take a nice payday and back England. At the end of the game, if Scottish wins its independence, whoever has the most gold is going to be declared the winner. However, Scotland will not win its independence every single game. Sometimes England will get the upper hand in winning the majority of the battles. If that's the case, whoever has been the most honest and most loyal to Scotland wins the game. And I'll explain that a little bit here in a second. I don't want to go too many into too deep into the rules of this game and how it's played, but really kind of talk to you about how I feel the game's played. Um, in this game, you're going to be setting up the England's deck by choosing one of the two uh, red cards here, putting it at the bottom, and then you're going to take six of the other cards, excuse me, and putting it on top there. Every turn, you're going to reveal this as being a potential threat. Now there are different things that are going to happen with this card. First, it's going to tell you what happens if you support Scotland and they are victorious. In this case, every player would get a bagpipe card and three gold. Um, on this uh, middle section, it'll tell you what happens if England is uh, victorious. Um, whoever supports them will get one additional unit and it'll also get one gold. And then also, just for supporting England, the players are going to be able to um, essentially split eight gold amongst them, whoever supports England. Uh, you're also going to be taking one of these dagger cards. Now, these dagger cards are varied in number. They have a number on them, one to three. This is a two dagger. Um, you, when you get this, you can look at it. You don't reveal it to the other players. You can give them a hint of what it is, but you're going to put that secretly down in your camp or in front of your uh, play area. And at the end of the game, whoever has the most daggers is going to be the, basically the the... Filthy English supporting scum. Um, if you ever have five more daggers than the player that's in second place, you immediately forfeit your chances for victory. So, supporting England, where it comes with a very, very nice um, uh, prize in that of gold, um, also comes with treachery. And if you're known at the end of the day as someone that's being very treacherous, you're going to have to really make decisions on whether or not you want to support England and when. Um, there is a bagpipe card deck here that acts as instants, interrupts, and other things that can be played in the different phases of the game. There's a lot of different variety here, and um, some of these are really nasty. Very, very PvP heavy in this deck from what I've seen during my play experiences. Um, overall, I think this is a very, very good game, and I think this is definitely one I would like to see a major release in the state side anyways, um, and definitely an international um, now, the company that usually publish, uh, publishes this rather uh, is a Russian-based company, so a lot of the things that are originally for this game are all um, in Russian. However, I do have an English prototype here, and it plays very well, and I really I really enjoy it. It's, it's, it's very neat. Um, this symbol here is goes to the oldest player at the beginning of the game. This is the kind of uh, symbol of Scotland. And what you're going to be doing is essentially giving this symbol to another player uh, during a certain point of the game. When you do that, they become the active player for the next turn. And that also forces them to have to support the side of Scotland. So how do we support Scotland? On our turn, we're going to be able to do different things and get uh, units, more gold, and that kind of thing. So on our turn, we're going to be able to play different actions that we have. Um, and one of those actions is a replenishment action. On that, I can actually take a gold from the supply, and that's it. I can add um, one 
unit here to everybody's camp, including William Wallace's camp. Um, let me just swap that out like that. I can also take two, uh, excuse me, take two and put them in my castle. I can uh, even take or pay one gold and take four of these units and put them in a castle. So you're going to be getting these units. At the end of the turn, any unit that is in a camp, including William Wallace's camp, is going to be discarded. So you're going to want to be able to balance the forces that you have in your castle and what's in your camp. You're going to be able to do that by moving them from your castle to your camp and one of the phases of the game. Uh, sorry, during your action phase. So you can you, you do your replenishment action, whatever that's going to be, and then you have the optional actions of playing bagpipe, bagpipe cards or moving your units from the castle to the camps. Once that all happens, we have a certain number here in the bottom of this invasion card that we have to beat. Um, that card number right now is five. So if we look at the table, I've got one, two, three, four there. Somebody's going to have to move some more car, some more units to this actual to a camp. So now we have six strength versus England's five strength. And what we're going to do at this point, after everybody has done playing their actions and all bagpipe cards have been played and resolved for this phase, we're going to each secretly choose a side that we're going to support, either the crown or Scottish independence. Now, if you have this symbol, generally that means you're going to be forced to do Scottish independence, so you set your marker up forward. Everybody else will secretly choose theirs and then reveal. So we've got a Scottish independence, Scottish independence, and a Scottish independence. However, let's say that was a crown. And they actually backed England here. That would force uh, England's number or army strength to go to six because you're going to add whatever the total is in the camps that are supporting England together. So it's six versus our one, two, three, four, five. And that is going to be a pretty big problem for us. It means we're actually going to lose that battle. Now, the supporter of England is going to take a trader card, put that down. They're also going to get a unit to put in their castle. They're going to get a gold. And they're going to get eight gold in addition because they're the only people that supported England. So that player, even though they took some treachery here, they're going to get a lot of gold. And there's also a ton of different, excuse me, every card has its own unique circumstance that happens whenever you, uh, excuse me, during the invasion. Sometimes it happens during the res uh, resolutions of attacks. Sometimes it happens during, um, or it can actually change the mechanics of the game of who you, which side you can go for, or incentivize going for a, a certain side. So there's a lot of things that make this really, really good. There's quite a bit of deduction that's going to happen in this game as well. And it's not just the, you know, um, uh, are you a werewolf, are you a spy type deduction. There's, there's, there's politicking that goes on. And what, what I really think of when I play this game is that scene in Braveheart, where um, some of the different clans basically just turn their back on Wallace and they just march off the arm, uh, march off the battlefield, and they let the other guys get their butts kicked. Those kind of things actually happened. So if if the if the crown is going to pay us nine gold for doing a job, uh, sometimes it's going to mean doing the job, even though we're going to be losing a territory. Now, as we lose territories and as glass, or excuse me, as this starts to burn, if we ever reach the skull. England has won, and again, whoever has the fewest daggers is going to be declared the winner. However, if after this deck is completely resolved, and we are still uh, we still haven't reached the uh, skull, or Scottish has won the majority of the battles, or ever, we're going to be sitting pretty, and whoever has the most gold uh, is going to be declared the winner. So there's a lot of different uh, checks and balances, and and almost gambling on. On is my sacrifice or is my treachery going to be worth it in the end? So if everybody supported the crown in that, everybody would get getting uh, excuse me dagger cards, and we'd be splitting this gold. So getting eight gold for supporting England is is a really really nice payday. Um, however, only getting two or three of that gold is not so nice, especially when we could have backed to Scotland and gotten the three. Um, so. All in all, it's a very um, it's a very interesting and intriguing concept for me personally. Uh, Sword and Bagpipe is a lot of fun, and I think it's definitely one that deserves to be on your shelf. So I'd strongly recommend checking it out on Kickstarter as soon as you can. 
As soon as I know of where the Kickstarter is, I will put a link in the description of this video. I welcome any feedback regarding this game and how it's played. And uh, I really think this is one to definitely check out if you're a fan of deduction games. Um, if you're a fan of bluffing games, this is a really, really tight game. And it's a little bit longer, it's a little bit meatier experience than some of the other games that are out there in this particular genre. So definitely check out Swords and Bagpipes by Young Eggeroff. It is a really, really fun game and definitely one that we uh, highly recommend. Uh, Jan, I'd like to thank you for allowing me to check out the game. I really hope you guys' Kickstarter does well and uh, good luck in the future with everything. Guys, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Tell your friends. That really, really helps us out. And at the end of the day, all that matters is that you play games and have fun. So until next time, game on.